Hi, welcome back to Ask the Guiltless Gourmets. I'm Lee. And I'm Nancy. And this is where we share quick culinary tips and answer all of your questions. Today we're going to talk about ancient, ancient grains. <laughs> so I feel like you're much more of an expert on ancient grains than I am. I know that quinoa is something that you introduced me to probably 10 or so years ago and it's something that I'd never eaten before. I remember that it's a complete protein yes. and it's really good for you and it's kind of become I think the superstar of the ancient grain world. At least the media um, star, right? Right, so there are a lot, lot of other things that we need to know about, and I know that you know a lot about this stuff, and let's, uh, let's see what we've got today. Okay, so ancient grains sounds really fabulous, but we've been using ancient grains in the United States for a long time because we've been using rice. So I have a bag of rice right here that's really fun. It's called red cargo rice. It's from Thailand. That's one of the things I want to get people excited about ancient grains because they are good for us. They provide a lot of fiber and protein and they're easy to make and they are delicious. And I, I think one of my favorite things about the grains is that they're just kind of a blank canvas. They, they soak up, they're like a sponge. They soak up whatever flavor that you want to impart Exactly. So it's a great base for anything. Exactly. So if I was putting together this Thai rice, I would put in Thai flavors like lemongrass and garlic and ginger. So um, don't be afraid to buy rice that you haven't you haven't seen before. I mean, that package is, I, I know. I'm a sucker. I would buy it for the package <laughs> even if I didn't know what was inside I know. of it. It's so pretty. So um, you mentioned quinoa and that's what we are most often, uh, or we most often see. So there's our quinoa, and I gotta say, I like the tri-colored quinoa better than I like the white quinoa. One, the more color that you bring to the table, right, the better it is for you, and two, I just think it tastes better. That's what I was gonna ask, does it actually have I a think different it does. taste? I think it does. So quinoa is super easy to make. You all have probably made quinoa in the past. One of the ancient grains that I find that people have not made, um, and they should, um, quinoa is a complete protein, right? Guess what else is? Farro. So there's farro. It kind of looks like brown rice, doesn't it? Yeah, or almost like sun, called sunflower seeds. Yeah, That's what yeah. it looks like too. So farro is um, actually, its original name was emmer wheat, E-M-M-E-R. It's from Egypt and it's been used for thousands of years. Don't you love saying that? I love that. We, and, we're, we're not even trendsetters. This is a whole thing. I know. Right? So, um, the farro is super easy to make and it's a blank canvas, just like the quinoa. So, this is your farro that's raw, and here is farro that's cooked, and it looks a lot like rice. Doesn't yeah, it? or oatmeal, almost oatmeal, oatmeal barley. They, yeah, all kind of, exactly. they all kind of look similar. And speaking of, Barley. So barley, believe it or not, it's more than your Campbell's beef and barley soup. <laughs> um, pearl barley can be used, or, or barley can be used in any kind of application that you would use quinoa or farro okay. or rice. Um, and uh, you notice I said pearl barley when I started out. Pearl barley is not quite as good for you as just regular so barley. That's more processed. It is a little more processed. It still has a lot of fiber and protein, but we have even more if you could find just regular barley. So I'm assuming that this regular barley takes longer to cook than the pearl barley. It does. Barley. And this is actually a Bob's Red Mill pearl barley, and I love it. Um, but I actually make use pearl barley all the time because it is, it's got that same lovely texture as the farro does and kind of like rice and it's just all the So flavors. now is this something that you could also use with a sweet flavoring? Cause it looks so much like oatmeal. What, could you make a breakfast thing yes, out of this? Yes, of course, of course. Um, in fact, you know, if you go online and Google some breakfast stuff, you will find that people will put like seven grains together for breakfast and things like that. So you could, you can actually buy, I think Bob's Brewed Red Mill has like a five grain okay. breakfast cereal that's all these different grains. Like, so you could probably, you don't have to cook it with water. You can use any kind of liquid, like yes. even just an almond milk or regular milk or something like that. Or stock, if you're going to make a preparation. Okay. So that is a really good point. 
I've got a couple other things that before um, I go on to tell you what I'm gonna do with my Faro, um, I wanna show you, so this one, I, it's so fun. So, I, you know, I love going it's to another, international grocery store. It's another good package. Yes. And so this is couscous. And you think to yourself, why, Nancy? This couscous is a pasta. It's not a grain. But this is a barley um, couscous. So this is made with the barley, but it's made into little tiny little balls. So I'm dying to try this Oh, one. I can't Isn't wait. That, I can't I wait to see how that one turns out. That's really... Really cool. Yep. And then um, last but not least, I'm going to show you another one that's easy to find in the store, and that is millet. It's because no one buys it. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and I made <laughs> millet once. And I came when we were working together at Cancer Wellness, and we decided that it was the swan song. And I don't think this package is from them, but it could be. Um, anyway, millet is the same thing they use in bird seed, and when you um, when you cook it, it does get a little gelatinous, too gelatinous for me. I got a thing about that. Save it, save it for the birds, yeah, I think. But yeah. I mean, we're trying to be include all the ancient crayons yeah. that we'll tell you about it anyway. Yeah. And if you, if yeah, you and some people really love it. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I understand that. So I said cook it. So I wanted to just point out to you uh, because Lee said, how, how do you cook this stuff? And I said, ha. Huh. The good news is, is you're buying it in a package and there are directions in the packet on top, on the back of the package. But I do also want to just share real quickly my, my way of knowing how to cook rice. Even things like this kind of rice, the red, what is it called? Cargo. Cargo rice. Um, I use the one, two, three method. One cup of rice to two cups of water equals three cups of cooked rice. Yep. So with, for instance, farro, one cup of farro with three cups of water equals four cups of farro. So it's all kind of um, a riff on that, um, even, even the quinoa. So um, make ancient grains. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with my farro and I'll put the recipe, oh, not down below, but in our next post. I'll put the recipe in our next post. I'm gonna make a Mediterranean inspired farro salad. I'm gonna use chickpeas in it. I'm gonna use some cumin, some smoked paprika little bit of olive oil, and it's so good when you make it. And I bet it's something that tastes better the next, the next day. day or two. Yeah, and you can pop it into a pita pocket. You can do so much with it. So um, stay tuned for that recipe, which will be uh, coming out our, in our next post, which will be tomorrow. And um, until then, start making some ancient grains. Be adventurous. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. We are Ask the Guiltless Gourmets, and please don't forget to ask your questions because we would love to answer them for you here. Write Thank in the you. comment box below. Until next time. Oh, bye. bye. I'm getting